you what's going on y'all it's jay small reviews here back at it again with another video and uh once again i'm very happy to bring you guys another installment of the golden years series um for those of you you know that haven't been here before quick rundown you know we've been over this three times now but golden years is a series where we go over some of the particular best years or best primes of a battle rapper's career uh look at their best streaks you know what i'm saying it's kind of like going back and looking at the mvp seasons the the stick out seasons for some of these guys um you know we don't got seasons but best comparison that i can make and for this one you know i'm very happy to bring to you guys the golden years rum nitty 2016 2017 uh edition mostly 2016 though heavy emphasis on the year 2016 um with just a battle or two uh, to wrap up at the beginning of 2017. Uh, in my opinion, in a very storied career now for Rum Nitty, one of the best bar for bar battlers, you know, just in the history of the game. Uh, it is one of the years that sticks out. Obviously, it's kind of his first push on URL. He had work beforehand and had a bunch of amazing work afterhand. You know, we talk about guys with careers like this. There's always so much to break down, but particularly his 2016 when he first came on the scene, has some of, uh, you know, his more well-known classic battles, quotable lines. It was just a very, very, you know, special time in his career and just a very great year in Battle Rap 2016 was. So, you know, as per usual, the usual format, we're going to go over some of his work leading up to this, you know, right before this, you know, where was Roman Diddy at? How are people talking about him? And then for each battle we go over, we're going to talk about, you know, the quotables of it, wins and loss, you know, what kind of effect did it have on his career? What, how did that change the perception on him? So without further ado, let's see where Rum Nitty was right before his early, you know, kind of smack run on 2016. So to start out with some of Rum Nitty's uh, preliminary work, obviously he started out at King of the Dot first, and I don't really have much to say about that because it's really going, you know, back, back, back before even really close to this time, but we all know magic you know oh red room nitty got to see a few pretty high level opponents arsenal in his hometown which is really one of the more underrated room nitty performances but even after that uh particularly going into his run right before smack he actually did have a few url battles before he really pop pop with the fans obviously he's been a gun heavy gun bar heavy rapper since the beginning even on king of the dots so it was inevitable that he was going to find his way to url and some of these early URL battles is versus Steams uh, and has this iconic, you know, Jordan in the flu game. You get the 38 playing sick, very fire and a very good battle getting to end uh, a good gentleman's 30 over a good Steams. And he also battled chess on the original traffic card. Um, also a very good battle. Uh, the kidneys, the kidneys fail. If you want to die, I'll assist. And something, you know, to quote for Rum Nitty early on is that each battle, whether you feel like you won, whether you feel like you lost, very very you know all-time great at producing quotables obviously being a puncher it's a little easier for him every other bar you know they're most likely to land haymakers that stick with us um so each of these battles you know you could usually pull a bar out of and uh the chess was a very good showing you know chess came 10 11 minute round chess so it might hurt the footage uh just a little bit but still a, a very a very good battle and then also the danger zone matchup um on the dead on arrival card and this was also a very good matchup and the one thing i will say is that while i do uh, have rum nitty winning all three of these battles particularly versus danger zone his sportsmanship became an issue a lot of talking through rounds um and it's definitely something that you're gonna we're gonna talk about a little bit here uh early on in nitty's run but the sportsmanship was a little bit of an issue and it showed the danger zone battle doesn't stop the fact that he's still in a very good bar for bar performance and then he also had some smaller league work uh spit that heat versus craig lamar very very big uh sleeper battle some of nitty's better uh, off url material and also had battles versus uh, the likes of quill on don't flop and he battled someone named ratchet so you know, with a little bit of work going on, had some of those early URL looks kind of build up plates, already had a pretty valid KOTD uh, body of work. And then also with some awfully work like this, Rum Nitty, you know, Rum Nitty's name was slowly rising up a uh, bar for bar, but just hasn't gotten his look yet guy. And all of that would change on Born Legacy 2 URL brought back the Born Legacy 2 event. And Rum Nitty was able to put on one of the most impactful battles of his career and kick off this run. And as some of you may have pieced together already, the battle was Av versus Rum Nitty. Uh, you know, Born Legacy 2, the return of Born Legacy. And also Av was on a humongous hot streak uh, of his own. Uh, another guy that was pretty bar for bar was coming up, you know, Battles versus Mike P and Nun Nun on his uh, way up the, that particular PG class. 
and in 2016, you know, Av was on a run, and it's just crazy how amazing this battle is, the two of them coming in, we're both like, well, these are two pen punch for punch guys just need a shot you put them together and you really get a super duper you know top 10 probably top five battle of all time something i'm gonna do different particularly for this battle there's way 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 too many bars for me to be able to do my regular breakdown of each round and bar so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put up uh some charts here when i go over a round of really just the bars i'm gonna mention a couple that are obviously super iconic i'm gonna have a clip in here as well as i always do for each battle in uh golden years but you know, starting from the first round, this is really where it, you know, off rip people knew how amazing this battle was going to be. Uh, and Av comes out, the I am legend bar, and really the bar that sticks out the most from the round, pointing at the back of his head, that's Alpha Alpha, uh, John Q, some bar, many, many bars that you guys are probably seeing here. And Av's energy in the first looked very daunting. Uh, Tay Rock screaming in the background, it's going to be a long night. And People, you know, a lot of people weren't familiar with Nitty's work like that. You know, there's a, you know, just so happens you come to URL. There's a lot of masses there that really just watch URL. So they're waiting. They're like, man, this Av has been looking unstoppable lately. I, is this Rum Nitty going to match that? And he matches that in the first round. Um, Obviously, by far, the most famous bar. MOP, your ante up. Hold up. Cold fiction. If I whip the piece, your family fucked. Headshot your mom, sister. They gon' have to M.O.P. your ante up. Hang the what? Uh, absolutely incredible, incredible all-time type of stuff. But that doesn't stop there. You know, also the Jack Nicholson, uh, Here's Johnny Bar was incredible. Uh, Lay rocked out on Av. It looks like Cobblestone. Just really, really matched it. And for me, you know, personally, I had Nitty edging the first round. Absolutely incredible. And then it, what's funny is that for the rest of the battle, although it's very, very classic, I think they both split the last two rounds clear. Uh, Av comes out. He is a pop digital, try to be digital underground bar. Um... Dome shot, head hit his shoulder, he did the thriller dance. So Av has another fire second, but I think Nitty pretty clearly takes the second. Crazy how I'm a diss Troy Av, but I love Brooklyn. Uh, trying to get rid of your house in Virginia like Magic Johnson, which said to Av, a VA battler. Fucking incredible, man. Just really, really incredible stuff bar for bar here. So me personally going into the third round, you know, I did have Nitty 2-0. Uh, so, you know, in a pseudo way, I'm saying I did have Nitty winning the battle, but... You know, it comes down to the first, and it's a super-duper classic. And just to get an Av third real quick, it's not a golden years for Av, but we do have to mention 30 under the 40. That's the improper fraction. Uh, the love handles bar strapped and fat on both sides. I love handles. And Nitty, similar to Av second, still has an amazing third round, uh, but it just doesn't match up to a career, you know, highlight kind of round. I think Av got the third very clearly, but Nitty has the assault on Av, like ice in the street. I earned my respect. I snatched it. So you guys are probably seeing the bars across the screen. You can pause if you want to see any of the quotables, but super duper bar for bar heavy battle, possibly the best puncher versus puncher battle in the history of battle rap. And we've had a lot of amazing bar fest. So in this super duper classic, you know, I personally edged Nitty 2-1. Uh, and from here, it, it's kind of crazy that after that first battle, it was so impactful, so amazing that they actually rushed Nitty onto a card coming up right after against another legend, a legend on a little bit of the downslope to some people. But, you know, this battle was just so, so impactful. They decided Nitty needs to keep getting top tiers. He is going to be one of our gunners. And his next battle would be against, like I said, a very high named legend. And this legend plate came in the form of Charlie Clips, uh, a battle that sits at around 1.5 million views, so still following, you know, the pattern of million view battles for Nitty. And this is obviously considered one of the best clear wins in Nitty's catalog. Um, I think a lot with battle rappers, especially all-time greats, we're talking about usually the 5 to 7 uh, clear win range, maybe up to 10. And, you know, it, it also all gets subjective after a while, wins and losses. But this is one of those, you know, like kind of trophy statement, like as much as people like to clown on Charlie Clips's uh, fall off and stuff, not that many people can truly say they've beaten him clear. And that's why I think this is one of the more impressive just wins that Nitty has overall. And what's funny is that starting out in the first round, uh, Nitty actually lost the first round. And this was his first time in front of a stage, uh, you know, with a real magnitude of people kind of wasn't a full on big stage. It was the unfinished business two card, but about, I believe six to 800 people, maybe a thousand. Um, if pushing it, but Nitty's first is really not that great. Uh, he has a pretty decent round and he's jabbing. It's not like it's, it's not great content, but outside of, uh, I, that's the nose and the blade. I go ride a mez on him. 
Uh, it's a pretty light first, nothing that really definitively lands. And Clips kind of shows the versatility in his first round. Um, the Smith coming out the shirt more than JR after the finals. He had an Arizona long cam bar, which really should have gotten no reaction. They got to hate it. Uh, you know, that was a little bit ridiculous. But even past that, the throwing up fourth, uh, Willie Beeman concept that he did, great bar. And then also bringing in Jazz. Um, Kind of, maybe not a freestyle when he made it look like a freestyle jazz ain't it july so can i show the fourth how the fire works uh these hook the same this future this designer clips actually has a really good first round so clips took the first clear and from there it is one of these rare uh two one bodies as you can say or just a very very ugly two one loss as nitty turns up in the second uh people getting zipped up over their tongue that's gary payton's incredible uh, i let it air on his back like he's scuba diving i can flip out with two bars i ain't wasting none shuck man so much good stuff in this second uh steams in the back it's different uh you know it seems a little bit of crowd participation or a you know battle rap in the crowd you know back there participation even the, the this krs one this is the sound of the police and it really bar bar filled second what we were looking for turned it up very much so from this first round and this is where Clip starts going downwards. Way more freestyling and psych I lied. Frank Lucas, who came in the game in blue magic. I'm saying he stole magic style. Also, uh, block my shine. It was a Dwight Howard magic freestyle as well. So actually starts out with two pretty good freestyles, but then it becomes very indirect. Uh, the whole round is basically freestyling. Took a conscious approach and said, that's just a distraction. It's where he says people like a million fucking times, which is really funny. So it was 1-1, one, one, pretty clear going into the third. Uh, very clear going into the third. And then Nitty's third starts it out with a fantastic setup, leading into his most pretty, most, uh, my opinion, his best bar of the battle, maybe most iconic, the pumpkin spin on this New York bitch. How many rounds you don't have? You still a whole clip, I'm old school. I was raised to box. That's a forklift, flavor of love. This pumpkin spit on this New York bitch. <laughs> uh, very fire. And then even gun butt, bust a hype man like Spliff Star, fire. 45 clip, these ACPs fit you. So even the piggy bank bar, one cent in your back and you feel the change in your body. So much good material and clips. Some freestyling about rum ingredients, which Swamp actually made a very good haymaker out of recently versus Rum Nitty. But, you know, clearly a little bit lackadaisical and kind of gives up the third clear as well. So Rum Nitty clearly takes the second and third in a battle against the legend. Some people look down on it, say Clips wasn't fully Clips or whatever. But at the end of the day, you can only battle what's in front of you. The man battled Charlie Clips and he got a clear victory. So after this, it was just another good win. Like I said, he was Smacks Gunner and we were just waiting for the next top tier challenge, next style clash that Rum Nitty would get. And this next challenge came on Born Legacy 3, same venue as Born Legacy 2, and produced another fantastic battle, a near classic, if not classic battle, versus Ill Will. Uh, personally, these first two rounds here from Nitty are some of my personal favorite uh, Nitty material of all time. I remember watching this, I was around 15, 16 years old, waiting for the YouTube drop. And even when I heard it was great in the building, uh, it, it was nothing that could prepare me for just some of the iconic quotables. Really, it came both ways, because Will had an amazing performance too. Um, I might do something similar this battle with the uh, with the quotables up here because you know with a with a guy like Rum Nitty I just can't name every bar uh, when it comes to this guy but specifically in the first round opening up with the fifty point ten assist I called a double double uh, one of his best call out bars which led to this great battle down the line uh, fuck shine this K got a, I know he dead kick. <laughs> And just his first is so technically sound. So many bars that I, I call sneak haymakers. It's like the crowd can't possibly react and give a haymaker reaction to each one. But even my shit a fly, even my miscarry, you won't make it out this bitch alive. Uh, the Carrie Underwood bar, uh, let Jesus take the wheel. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And Will comes back and matches the energy and has haymakers of his own. Put rum in the OR. It's not a rumor. The Atlanta Hawk, Kevin Willis bar. Shout out Kevin Willis, OG for the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, the Ace Ventura, my shooter's hanging out the window, like Ace Ventura on the freeway, dumping shit in Yo Yard, me, myself, and Irene. And the only thing that I think, I think this is, you know, obviously considered debatable at the time. And I think as time has went on, Will had some in-between stuff, the Gypsy Dyke bar, the Spider-Man sex tape, Spider-Man sex tape bar. Uh, I had to say it twice because yes, I'm being for real. <laughs> that was a setup. And Will's always... 
He is a very unorthodox battler, so he's going to have some concepts there that just can airball, but when it hits like it did in the first round, you get a mix of some crazy concepts and some e extremely well-performed haymakers. So the first been debatable. I gave it to Nitty, and I think over time, Nitty's writing has stood the test of time. Just more people appreciating how well-packed his first was, and then to respond, to gain the momentum back in the second round, um, he starts the round with his his best bar of his career, the most iconic bar of his career, coming down with something. I was up in the hotel for long rounds for cousin. Big rounds I'm stuffing. They stay ill in the lobby. I grab the nose running. I'm coming down with some stuff. Oh Um, absolutely incredible and then follows that up with pull up hammer burst show you how the ladder work pull up with it whoever in front get injured that's the Madden curse uh, so much good stuff ill nine go all foxy brown the Jimi hendrix bar Shacked uh, the 357 one, thinking he shack size. The Duce bar, incredible. So Nitty was able to get the second pretty clear. Will had a good second, the, the Chanel purse line, but just couldn't run with him in the second. And then the third, it's the flip side. Will gets it clear. Uh, Nitty is a good third, but he kind of rushes through his material where when Nitty's at his worst is when you feel like his round is kind of short, maybe like two minutes flat, because he is flying through his material and I think in the third here it's one thing to be back to back but then there's another thing to just run through your material as quick as possible so uh Will was able to put on the showman he had his Crypt Keeper bar obviously uh, probably his best bar of the battle uh the press conference freestyling just showing the all-aroundness and that's what got Will the third clear Nitty took the second clear with just iconic iconic quotables and then the first you know you could divide up to a preference round like I said I think over time Nitty's gotten a little more clear on cam but once again amazing footage from Nitty putting on a dope dope battle against a very dangerous returning ill will the url so now we're talking uh the av classic beating clips clear having another borderline if not flat out classic with ill will and he had been calling someone out all throughout this and with gnome six coming up he finally would get his chance after all this momentum to take this to the one of the major major events and go up against one of the top top guys on the roster at that time and this battle would be Tay Rock versus Rum Nitty. Uh, not going to spend too, too much time talking on this one. Obviously, usually when uh, something knocks off your momentum, this is where I'd say the run would end for Nitty. Um, I do think that he was able to respond pretty well after this battle with a couple showings. And you guys will see and understand why I cut the run off later. But a battle that's considered disappointing. And it's tough because I actually think Nitty's first round versus Tay Rock is one of his better uh, to this day on the main stage bars such as the Jimi Hendrix bar calling out uh, Khan as well. Lil Uzi in his mouth, now he can mumble rap. Uh, what, and one mocha sit in your mug. I do this shit a lot, Tay. Obviously to end his round uh, in the first, he has the He Got Game bar, which was fantastic. It's fourth motherfucking homie, my whole team might bang. And them niggas will get on your head if you speak my name. Nigga, we not playing. Fully automatic pop. Then I let Jesus handle rock. Thinking he got game. Nigga, real shit. And overall, uh, you know, Nitty went after Rock in the first, and Rock had a pretty standard first. It was a copycat, this copycat with a duplicate. Uh, Talk about Robin Nitty's house. Rock got the bottom covered like a fish tank, but. You know, like I said, mentioning the bars before, Nitty's first is actually to this day one of his better on the big stage. And it was really setting up like that is what we wanted to see, you know, for this battle going forward. But sadly, what derails it? Some tension, some scuffles, and almost fights. And really just takes away. It happens two different times, and each time you can clearly see it rips the momentum away. Plus, this was at the back end of a gnome. I believe this was the last battle tonight, maybe second to the last. Uh, so the energy is already kind of, you know, people are very excited for this battle. Gunbar, you know, Gunbar King, uh, kind of title up in for grabs. Very, like, mirror match. Usually stuff like this produces classics, but the tension. Uh, Rock starts his second off with, like, a, an angle about being Nitty's stepdad, which I didn't like. It's more of a comedy angle, but really wasn't, didn't care for it at all. And then they get in each other's face, turns Nitty's hat. We all know how it goes. The, the entourages jump in. And it just sucks. Can't really blame either of them. Tensions are high. You know what I'm saying? They're in each other's space. It's just grown men doing grown men shit. And after that, Rock hits a little bit of a, what do you call it? A little little bit of fire at the end. I wouldn't say fire because this battle, besides I think even the first round, never really reaches to the term fire. But he has a died like Harold at the light. 
was a pretty good bar to end this round and a couple others. So Rock had an okay second. That's what you get from the after the first round. This battle was just okay, and this battle needed to be more than okay for the hype going into it. And then Diddy has a very similar second where he has a pocket check bar in the beginning, which you know, after the first scuffle, obviously now everyone's coming over, you know, all types of tension, and Brea's trying to jump through the stage. It's a pretty well-executed pocket check bar, but, you know, it, it, it wasn't worth, you know, the scuffle that it brought. And then Nitty tries to get it back, and he has the ladder match, put a title in the air. That's a ladder match, which is cool, as well as the, uh, they're not going to know what happened to Rock, like Stonehenge or goes in. But even then, those bars don't get the love they deserve in the building because the energy is already shot by then. And then you get into the third round, which is what really kills, kills this battle. Now, me personally, the first I gave to Nitty Clear, and the second is super duper, duper, duper debatable. Um, you know, I edge Nitty the second, but you edge Rock the second. It's, it's like a okay neck and neck round. And then the third, Nitty has probably his worst round as a professional. Um, he starts with the Miss Hustle Tranny Angle. I don't even have to go into it. Just horrible, horrible execution, horrible pacing, weird topic, uh, kind of the start, which goes to show you battlers, stop using the tranny angle versus Rock. It does not work. And I don't even got to quote anything from Rock's third. Uh, Nitty then proceeded to rush through his material right after the angle missed. Clearly just looked rattled um, and just a horrible, horrible third from him. So he lost the third clear. Uh, I thought got the first clear. So this is just a monkey 2-1 debatable. Um, I don't think it knocked him off his momentum very much. Like I said, afterwards, we're going to go over some battles here that I think he was able to bounce back pretty good. Um, but definitely for a match that was built up this big, it definitely was a disappointment. Um, and the question was, you know, after facing adversity like this first time he had on his URL run, how is Nitty going to respond? And the answer to that is Nitty actually has two battles here. I'm going to do two kind of crunched in here. Uh, where he's great showings. He's the two-on-two -two where it was Team Hami. It was him and Ill Will versus NYB, which was core and math. Uh, and, you know, I don't cover two-on-twos very much on this channel. You know, I look at them very exhibition, all-star-like, very entertaining, but not really towards the side of competitiveness outside of, like, you know, some some certain ones, specific ones in history we can name. But he has a good showing on double impact there. A lot of them have him winning. A lot of people have him and Will winning that battle. They had the... The, they flipped the one moment about them flipping Lux, like something load in, shut down the building, hold on, let me get it together. Very, very fire. And then after that, he battles Chef Trez on Born Legacy Supreme. Um, and man, he bodied Chef Trez, which is crazy to think about. I think for, you know, uh, it, it's it, it's crazy because Chef Trez was a good battler, and this wasn't even the craziest Nitty. I think it swept under the rug because this was between Gnome 6 and SM6, which Nitty was a part of both of them. We'll get into SM6 here in a second. Uh, but just first round of third, I think Trez kind of has some cool rebuttals here. He's an Al Capone shirt rebuttal, um, as well as a, a wig on the plate rebuttal to some of the stuff that he said. But his overall stuff just really was jabbed him to death, and Nitty came in just... I'm not even going to go round for round, because like I said, he won all three of them clear. Very dominant fashion, but raised the arm on Chef if he's throwing salt. Uh, lay, lay the... The little blood ain't gonna hurt nothing, like telling your bitch to lay the towel down. Um, the walking up right on a caveman, this is human evolution. Crazy, he has the Paula Dean bar, which to me, one, I believe one bar of the night on the voting polls on Rap Grid at the time, so the Paula Dean bar was fantastic. Just me, just me. I don't need a team to stretch you here, Paula Dean. Just one nigga can end a chef career. Uh, the Kids Choice Awards, Dropping Slime, just styling. He also has the ridiculousness bars. He gets to the bottom of this. The James Harden after the shot, Chef of the Air, fire, very creative. And I said, will say the one thing about this, this is not a humongous accomplishment because at the time, Chef Chaz, although it was good, uh, was mid-tier talent, probably the lowest talent that he faced here in this whole run that we're going over. Uh, not that Chef's bad, but just when you're going against top tier and top tier, you're kind of expected to win this battle clear. Uh, winning in this a body, like I said, 3-0. Uh, I guess you can debate it's not. Uh, I think it's a body, but at the very least, it's just 3-0, clear, not a gentleman's. And um. It was a pretty good bounce back, you know, coming off the rock battle. Uh, whether you have him winning or losing really is minute, because while it's very debatable, the quality of the footage is mucky. Very different from his first battles in this run versus Clips, versus Ill Will, versus Av, where there's just not that much replay value to it. So for him to bounce back, have the good two-on-two -two showing, 
showing some versatility there. And then coming in the Chef Trez battle, you can even see the performance is getting a little bit there. He has an amazing rebuttal. Uh, I guess Chef Trez mentioned, uh, not I guess, Chef Trez mentioned his fake Jordans in the battle, um, that he had wore fake Jordans. And Nitty came back with the this kick, uh, Unreal 2, fire. So very all around. And with this, you know, we're post uh, Gnome. He is a good get back. So, you know, the, the people are back on Nitty's side. Not that too many people left, but people are like, okay, he faced adversity with Rock with the whole, the fighting, the weirdness and everything that went to that comes back and he looks like he's back on track for a good showing. And then with Summer Madness around the corner, Nitty was announced for Summer Madness. And this is where we enter into the final battle of this Golden Years run. And as we get into the last battle, change of scenery, you know, I'm finishing up recording the next day. Um, the last battle of this run that we're going to get into, Summer Madness 6, JC versus Rum Nitty. Uh, now, I spoke about this battle not so long ago on the channel on my JC top five performances. Um, and as I, I'm just going to reiterate a lot of the points that I said there. And realistically, I think on paper, you know, going into this battle, a lot of us were expecting a super pen fest. You know, uh, we've talked this whole video about Nitty's trajectory, how great he was battling the punches. And then versus a guy like JC, who was also on his Lux campaign, you get two of the best bar for our battlers in the world going head to head. And, um... I think that, you know, especially, you know, being that this is the end of Nitty's run, I consider this a clear loss for Nitty. And the reason is really doesn't have much to do with his bars. I think material-wise, he was very sound from first to third, um, especially in his first round. You know, just right off top, starting on Nitty, that this is the God pen depends on God for a line reaction. Talk about his vital signs. The point at Yahweh, yes, you will be missing Jay like the Hebrew language. I come after the block, waving one like the Kim Bay did it. Uh, many, many bars, really had a good first round, made the first debatable, but even in the first, which I still edge to JC, um, the difference here is crowd control and presence. And this is a critique that I think Nitty is pretty much fixed in his career, you know, talking up to this point. But especially early on, he showed shades of it uh, in the Rock battle, obviously in his third. But I think in the JC battle, this is what leads to his first clear loss on URL. And what I think kind of, you know, sits him down there, uh, ends this run, ends his momentum. Uh, and, and some people will say, oh, it's gas, and JC had the crowd on his side, which JC definitely did have the crowd on his side. I feel like they were definitely a little bit biased, um, you know, a little over cheering. But with that being said, the reason that they were so in tune with JC and not with Nitty is Nitty loses his confidence in his delivery, a lot of my bads, a lot of huffing, uh, walking with his head down. And it's like the body language is so visual that he kind of thinks he's losing, uh, that you can just see it, and it shapes really the battle for itself. Um, and JC, after Nitty has a very good first, JC comes out, uh, you know you got me all the way fucked up, right? Automatically pretty much swings the momentum, just oozing confidence and from the jumping around. If you're going to jump, don't jump in around unless you're willing to jump in front of one. The musical chairs, I don't know shit about anime. I'm Ike Turner, uh, crazy. Uh, counting every step, like make every step count like a Fitbit. Just, you know, it was a it was a one zero edge. And then as you get into the second and third round, um, you know, I'm not even going to go just round for round here because I think JC clears the second and third. And what's crazy is that, especially in his third, but even in the second, Nitty has some great shit. Uh, for y'all thinking Jay to fire his whole career getting fucked. Uh, the 50, when the 50 comes out, all things fall apart. Fire, the vice versa bar. Uh, and even into his third, if y'all, for y'all anticipated for me to drop Carter, sorry for the wait. The 50, thinking kind of punch with me, dome shot. You falling on your face. If you anticipated me dropping Carter, sorry for the wait. Go up again. <laughs> Ice JC's whole face. He, now he's a Jesus piece. There's great, great material. And people say this battle, the material is debatable. That might be true. I think if just on paper, these guys really matched each other writing wise, but the difference is in the performance, the difference is in the confidence. And it just goes to show if the crowd's not rocking with you, perform straight through it like you're in an empty room. At least give your fans or at least just the people a chance to debate it on camera and be like, a hey, crowd wasn't rocking with him, but he was cooking. But when, you know, he admitted to the loss afterwards, but when you're sulking, holding your head, saying my fault to the crowd, there's only so much that, uh, you know, people can do to argue it for you. So JC, you know, continued his run of dominance. And although it was still a decent nitty performance, in my opinion, you know, I had JC beating him gentlemen's 30 and ending uh, this historic 2016 to early 2017 run for Rum Nitty.
And with all that, you know, we do come to the end of this Golden Years video uh, for Rum Nitties 2016 to early 2017. Uh, you know, so much good to take out of this. You know, so many great battles, even in uh, some of the, the lesser battles here. I still think that there's great material, and that's a great thing about, you know, a guy like Nitty and some of these other uh, legendary pen-for-pen -pen guys that there's so much rewind and find that even if, you know, maybe it wasn't great live, you're able to get some material on the playback. And then on top of that, Nitty also 90-95% of the time does give good footage, gives good live footage, and uh, brings the best out of his opponents. You've seen a lot of these battles versus Ill Will and Av, even JC, which is a clear loss, you know, uh, in my opinion, maybe the best JC performance we've seen up to this point. And uh, post this run, uh, there's still greatness in there. I believe his next battle after uh, JC was the Iron Solomon battle, which we know is super duper classic. I've reviewed that one on this channel bar for bar. Um, but it got a little weak. He also took the John John loss not so far after. Uh, there, but we know Nitty's career after this. There is a lot more good than bad. But in terms of just the concentrated, the run, the streak, I feel like this is the best example of him, you know, with a prolonged amount of momentum. I think he was able to repeat something like this in 2019, which maybe one day we'll go over in another Golden Years video. But uh, 2016 Rum Nitty in my opinion, was just a year early from Champion of the Year as well. Obviously, Champion of the Year started in 2017, and I'm a believer that if, you know, Champion of the Year just started one year earlier, uh, Rum Nitty would have a belt on his shelf. Um, when you talk about that's the Av, from Av to Clips to Ill Will to Rock, the resume was there, although the Rock battle was a little bit of a letdown. For the most part, there's all great content, quotables, moments, and really impact. In 2016, Rum Nitty was the talk of the town. Uh, him and Av, you know, them coming up, and kind of starting an era. Uh, of punchers and punching being what's really sought after by the fans in battle rap more than anything but legendary the best puncher of all time debatably the best run uh, in the career of the best puncher of all time so really highlight stuff here and one of the reasons that i became such a humongous nitty fan myself is uh this 2016 run for me was you know very in high school like i said 15 16 this is kind of what i grew up on and this is uh, a time where i think the writing the level of writing that was accepted in battle rap changed uh really shifted the culture from just a, a pure technical perspective and it's a reason that he's one of the best in the world to this day but had a pleasure making this one. Uh, loved doing these. And as usual, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and you know, comment down below. Who do you want to see next on the Golden Years run? Who else should I, what run should I do? Get at me on my Twitter. That's in the description down below. Uh, and you can even tweet at me what run you want to see next. The run can have a clear loss in between, but if it's a signature, signature year from a battler, uh, definitely now to cover that uh, and open to all options that you guys are willing to give me. So, you know, had a lot of fun with this one. Cannot wait to keep making content for you guys. Also, I am a part of the Champion Gold Executive uh, Suite. So if you guys are wanting to tune into the spaces, uh, when you see Jay Black open up his Champion Gold spaces, there's going to be a couple of months. Go over the Copendium, talk about possible matchups coming up, who's better in each category, give our predictions. Um, so I'm just I'm putting in a lot, a lot of work, have a lot of content all over the place, just, you know, putting battle rap first and really breaking down this, this beautiful, beautiful sport slash art form that we all love. But it's been Jay Small Reviews again, y'all, and I'm going to catch you on the next one. Peace.